you very much. Thank you. It's great to be here with you today, and, and thanks to all of you for having me. I really appreciate that warm welcome. Hey, I'll tell you, there must be some NRA members out there. You know, to, to each of you, I really would, I'd like to thank you for being here today with me, and I'd like to thank you for your support and your vigilance in defending our freedom. It's really made a difference. You and NRA members all over the country have made a real difference in this nation in making our freedom safer. So thank you very much. You know, a little over a year ago, the NRA offered a simple, honest, and effective proposal to make our schools safer. The political and media elites responded by calling me just about every nasty name in the book. You remember. But Americans responded differently. In city after county, after school board, after state house, teachers, parents, legislators, police agreed with us and put armed security safeguards in place. History has proven again the truth that President Obama and anti-freedom activists everywhere deny and try to suppress. The truth that firearms in the hands of good people save lives. The political elites, the political elites, they can't escape, and the darlings in the national media can't change the God-given right of good people to protect themselves. For that fundamental human right, the NRA stands unflinching and unapologetic and in defense of our freedom. NRA's 5 million members and America's 100 million gun owners will not back down, not now, not ever. I assure you that. You know, freedom has never needed our defense more than now. Almost everywhere you look, something has gone wrong. You feel it in your heart. You know it in your gut. Something in our country has gone wrong. The core values that we believe in, the things we care about most in our lives are changing, eroding, our right to speak, our right to gather, our right to privacy, the freedom to work, to practice our religion, and raise and protect our families the way we see fit. Those aren't old values. They aren't new values. They are core freedoms, the core freedoms that have always defined us as a nation. We feel them. As we are here this afternoon, we feel them slipping away. All across America, everywhere I go, people come up to me and they say, Wayne, I've never been worried about this country until now. And they say it not with anger, but they say it with sadness in their eyes. I've never been worried about this country until now. We're worried about the economic crisis, choking our budgets and shrinking our retirement. We're worried about providing decent health care and a college education for our own children. We fear for the safety of our families. It's why neighborhood streets that were once filled with bicycles and skateboards and laughter in the air now sit empty and silent. In virtually every way, for the things we care about most, we feel profound loss. We're sad, not because we fear something is going wrong, but because we know something already has gone wrong. That's why more and more Americans are buying firearms and ammunition not to cause trouble, but because 
that America is already in trouble. We know that sooner or later, reckless government actions and policies have consequences. That when government corrupts the truth and breaks faith with the American people, the entire fabric of society, everything we believe in and count on, is then in jeopardy. Political dishonesty and media dishonesty have linked together. They've joined forces to misinform and deceive the American public. Let's be straight about it right here this afternoon. The political and media elites are lying to us. You know they are. They lie bills into law. They pass legislation they haven't even read, and yet eagerly go on and defend them on television. Health care policies, economic policies, foreign affairs, all seem repeatedly reckless. The IRS is now a weapon, a weapon to punish anyone who disagrees with them. And that means every one of you. They try to regulate our religion. They collect our cell phone and email data. They give us Solyndra, Benghazi, Fast and Furious, Obamacare, massive unemployment, a debt that will choke our grandchildren, and one executive order after another right on top of each other. And here's the deal. Rather than expose government dishonesty and scandal like they used to, the media elites whitewash it all. Move on, they tell us. There's nothing to see here. Don't worry about it. Move on. One of America's greatest threats is a national news media that fails to provide a level playing field for the truth. Now it's all entertainment, ratings, personal celebrity, the next sensational story, and the deliberate spinning and purposeful use of words and language, truth be damned, to advance their own agenda. You see it every day in this country. And here's how you know the media's lying. They still call themselves journalists. Yeah. I'll tell you, they've never been honest about the NRA. They hate us. Just for saying out loud and sticking up for what we believe, as if we have no right. So they try to ridicule us into oblivion or shame us into submission. But their moral indignation, it should be directed right into their own makeup mirrors. The media's intentional corruption of the truth is an abomination. And NRA members will never, and I mean never, submit or surrender to the national media. People in our country have become so weary of all the government and media dishonesty, the all too commonplace corruption, the lying, that most Americans have simply stopped listening in this country. It's why the President's State of the Union address was largely ignored by the public. It's why, according to a recent poll, 90% of Americans disapprove of Washington. It's why a majority of Americans, in poll after poll, regardless of who takes it, don't trust the White House, don't trust Congress, and don't much trust either national political party, and sure as heck, don't trust the national media. We don't trust government because government itself has proven unworthy of our trust. We trust ourselves. And we trust what we know in our hearts to be right. We trust our freedom. 
In this uncertain world, surrounded by lies and corruption everywhere you look, there is no greater freedom than the right to survive and protect our families with all the rifles, shotguns, and handguns we want. We know in the world that surrounds us, there are terrorists and there are home invaders, drug cartels, carjackers, knockout gamers, and rapers, and haters, and campus killers, airport killers, shopping mall killers, and killers who scheme to destroy our country with massive storms of violence against our power grids or vicious waves of chemicals or disease that could collapse our society that sustains us all. So, I ask you, all of you here today, do you trust this government to protect you? No. We are on our own. That is a certainty. No less certain than the absolute truth, a fact the powerful political and media elites continue to deny, just as sure as they would deny our right to save our very lives. The life or death truth that when you're on your own, the surest way to stop a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun. Now, what I've just said will be sneered at and ridiculed as feverish fear-mongering by the very same people who produce the television shows and movies that graphically depict and glamorize every evil act I just mentioned. So let them sneer. They can't change the truth. They can't change the fact that all over America, there are more than 100 million good guys and good gals too. Good Americans with guns. And a bunch of us are here right now we, we are good Americans. We all love our country. And we are not about to stand idly by as the dishonest political and media elites try to strip our values away. The NRA, all we believe in and fight for, it's really become a metaphor for the core American freedoms that all of us want preserved. Standing with the NRA is a massive declaration of individual rights, an unwavering determination to secure the survival of everything that we cherish. Our struggle is noble as like-minded people coming together to protect and defend what makes us free. We are exactly what our Founding Fathers were and envisioned us to always be. So I'll put it to you. Do you believe that Declaration of Individual Liberty? Come on, let me hear you. Do you believe it? Are you willing to stand and fight for your rights? Then there are two things that I need you to do. First. I want you to go to the NRA booth right here at CPAC and sign your name to a Declaration of Individual Rights. Sign that declaration today and add your name to millions of other patriotic Americans like you all over this great country. And second, I want you to stand behind your declaration and back it up by joining the National Rifle Association. America needs you as part of a larger, stronger, and tougher and growing NRA. It's how you resist. It's how you tell the world that you're going to fight and you're going to protect everything that you care about. Trust, dignity, honor, civic duty, courtesy, kindness, the liberty to live and believe as we choose, to be as accepted as we are accepting of others, 
the freedom that only comes through the Second Amendment and the Bill of Rights to the U.S. Constitution. <laughs> to live without fear and tyranny as responsible, good people who exercise our individual right to keep and bear arms to defend our families, our communities, and our nation. The NRA proudly stands for the America we all want, where we can speak and gather as we choose, unashamed of our patriotism, unflinching in defense of one unifying principle, individual freedom for all. Our Second Amendment in this country separates us from every other country on Earth. It makes us stronger than other countries. It makes us better than other countries. <laughs> to save all of our freedoms, there is no nobler cause than saving the Second Amendment. So this is your moment in history, your national movement, it's your time to join us and stand and fight. Our opponents are shrewd and skilled at spinning webs of deceit. Their coffers, and I know you know this, their coffers are full. Their sights are set squarely on this fall's election. And this election, and don't let anyone tell you otherwise, it's going to be a bare-knuckled street fight. They're going after every House seat, every Senate seat, every governor's chair, every state house they can get their hands on, and they're laying the groundwork to put another Clinton back in the White House. They fully intend to finish the job, to fulfill their commitment, their dream of fundamentally transforming America into an America that I guarantee you won't recognize. But mark my words, the NRA will not go quietly into the night. We will fight. I promise you that. With millions and millions of Americans just like you all over this country that are going to come together. This election is going to be won or lost on every street, in every corner, in every coffee shop, in every store, in every church in America, where every NRA member lives and works and volunteers and campaigns. Those NRA members those great Americans, they are the real muscle of NRA's clout. I ask all of you and everyone watching this out on TV, become one of them. Join us and together we will stand and fight and win back and take back our country. So stand up right now and you tell me, do you want to save this country and all that is good and right about America? Come on. They need to hear you all the way to the green rooms of MSNBC and all the way over to the White House. Will you stand with us and defend your freedom with all your heart? Are you proud of your individual liberty and ready to fight like hell to keep it this fall? Join the NRA movement to reclaim our nation and restore our core American values. Never, ever back down, and always, with all your heart, together as Americans, let's stand and fight for freedom. Thank you very much. Thank you.